صعبة اه الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله والصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك وحبيبك سيدنا محمد ما زلنا إنجليش We still in كتاب الصلاة And last time we talk about the salah itself The action of the salah itself And if there is any questions in salah itself Today we want to talk about two things, two main things The first thing, if you made mistake in your salah, how can you fix that mistake? If you miss something or add something or you are doubt in something. The second thing, that what something, some actions allow in salah and many Muslims, they thought it's not allow. Let me start with the second because it's easy. So for example, There is some type of movement in salah. If it's a little movement, it's allowed. Especially if there is a need for that. For example, there is always happening in Masjid al-Furqan here. That door is access to the, to the, the place of wudu downstairs. So sometimes after salah, some people they pray here. They just, they can move just a little bit. They thought they can't move at all. In this situation, it's highly recommended to move, to let be people access that door. And that type of movement doesn't break your salah. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sometimes do some movement in salah, that's the strongest opinion, if there is a need for that. For example, one day, Prophet ﷺ was in his house and there is a small, his small granddaughter, Umama. Umama is the daughter of Zainab bintu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Umama was a child. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam played with Umama and Bilal informed him of salah. Prophet sallam, you want to go And the daughter, his granddaughter, just catch his clothes. So he carry Umama and came and lead Salah while he carrying Umama. So that's a type of movement, but it's a little. So same things also, if you can move a little bit or, or you, if you pray in the house, And there is someone knock in the door a lot. There is something in need. You can move just a little bit and open that door. That's little movement. For a little movement also, if you are in salah and someone just leave the jama'ah for some reason, maybe he want to make wudu, and there is a gap in front of you, you can also go and fill that gap. It's better for the one who is right to you to fill the gap. But if no one fill the gap, you can move. That's a little movement also. So anything, it's a little, if you scratch your beards, for example, if you, all this little movement doesn't break your salah. Another thing also, sometimes you talk But in salah, but you thought you still in salah. How is that? For example, if the imam miss one rak'ah and he finish his salah and he says, Assalamu alaikum. So after salah, one of the musallin said, Oh, imam, you miss one rak'ah. Imam said, Really? Is that right? They said, Yes, you miss one rak'ah. Then he will make up, that's, I will say this in this lesson. So that saying, oh Imam, you miss one rak'ah, doesn't break your salah. Because it's just in the purpose of salah. I will make that clear, inshallah, after this. So that's a little movement, doesn't break your salah. And sometimes you need it if you are in front of the axis of some places or something like this. The main theme today is if you make mistakes, If you miss something in salah or add something in salah or doubt in some actions, 
which all fuqaha called sujudu sahu these two sajda to prostrating after salam or before salam what when you have to do this we can divide this situation to three categories the first category is when you add something second when you miss something third when you doubt of something when you add something miss something or doubt in something the first category when you add something for example in sujood sahu always you need to divide between two things you need to know that there is something called arkan arkan is something if you miss your salah is invalid like ruku' sujood usually this is the two famous thing that people forget ruku' or sujood that's the main things always people forget ruku' or sujood called rukun it means a pillar of salah salah is invalid without ruku' invalid without sujood but many things you forget for example the first tashahud to say subhan rabbi al ala subhan rabbi al ala all of this that's not rukun okay let me come back to that if you add something for example if you pray for raka in isha and you stand up to add fifth raka why because you thought you pray just three raka now you add fifth raka you are alone not with imam and while you are in salah in finish surah al-fatiha you remember no this is my fifth raka what shall you do in this situation you should sit down immediately to the tashahud do the tashahud and pray sujood sahu first of all everyone here knows this term sujood sahu raise your hand if you don't know this term okay sujood sahu is just two prostration two sajda that you do it when you add something or miss something or doubt in something two sajda called sujood sahu okay is it before salam after salam we'll say that inshallah but now just we say sujood so so you pray isha for raka you stand up for the fifth raka because you thought it's just three after fatiha you remember no i'm in my fifth raka the hukum now sit down immediately make the shahud and then sujood sahu because you add something you add something for example that's the most famous many people sometimes they add fifth rak'ah or if they are in salatul fajr they they add third rak'ah that's very famous what if the imam himself you pray with the imam in salatul isha and imam after the fourth rak'ah instead of sit down for tashahud he went to the fifth rak'ah usually when this happen people divide it to two groups one group are very certain there's always little group very certain that this is fifth rak'ah no doubt usually majority of musalli they don't know what's going on they just follow imam for those people who are 100% know that this is fifth rak'ah they are not allowed for them to follow imam they should sit down immediately and say subhanallah subhanallah for imam they should sit down immediately if they follow imam and they know it's fifth rak'ah their salah is invalid 
Because the Imam is in doubt, but they are not in doubt. They should sit down, subhanallah. What if the Imam don't listen? Why Imam sometimes don't listen? What do you think? Hmm. Yes, because he is certain. He thought, he's a mistake, but he thought, no, I am sure this is fourth rak'ah. That could happen. If that happened, those who are, who, who are certain should sit down, don't follow Imam at all. And those who are on doubt, absolutely, they, they will follow Imam. Okay, those who sit down, what should they do? They have two options. Either they can make the shahud from themselves and salam without Imam, or wait for Imam to finish that rak'ah and make salam with him. But they can't follow Imam and go to fifth rak'ah if you are 100% sure. If you do that, your salah is invalid. Because we follow Imam when he follow the sharia. If he add fifth rak'ah, khalas, we say goodbye to Imam. Even if, even if he is from Mauritania. Okay? <laughs> so that's the, the, if the Imam add fifth rak'ah. Because there is a lot of details in this lesson. I want to make sure. Is this situation clear? If the Imam at fifth rak'ah, or I should repeat it. Clear? Okay. And, okay. Now, this is if you add something. Usually, the people, they add just rak'ah. Okay. Suppose you add three sajda. This is very rare. Or you do two ruku'ah. Maybe you think about some, some youth here want to get marriage or something. And they thought a lot. So they do two ruku'ah. Imagine you are in Salatul Isha. Salatul Isha. And you are in any raka'ah. That's adding. So you add two ruku'ah. After the second ruku'ah. Oh, it's my second ruku'ah. What should you do? Just continue your salah, and in the end, you should do sujood sahu. That's two prostration. If you add any other action, then just continue, and in the end of salah, you have to make sujood sahu. Is that clear here? Okay, adding is a bit easy. The second category is missing something. If you miss something, that's very common. Okay, imagine you are pray Salatul Isha and you are in second rak'ah. You pray fat, you recite Fatiha, another surah, very nice recitation, and then you fall down to sujood, no ruku'ah. Think about marriage, okay? Straight away to sujood. No ruku'ah. When you are in your sujood, you remember, oh, I didn't do my ruku'ah. In this case, you should immediately stand up and go to your ruku'ah. Immediately go to your ruku'ah and continue the salah. And sujood sahu again in the end. Sujood sahu is always, if you add or miss or doubt, just go immediately. Again, you miss the ruku' and you remember when you are in sujood, go immediately. And do the ruku' and again and sujood. Suppose if you are in Salatul Isha and you are in second rak'ah again, you miss the ruku' You go to sujood, the first sajda, then the second sajda, then stand, then tashahud, then stand up to the third rak'ah. When you are reciting Fatiha, you remember that in the second rak'ah, second previous rak'ah, you didn't do ruku'ah. So you are in remember after you completed one rak'ah. Are you with me? Now, you just, the second rak'ah now become 
null and void. You just forget second rak'ah. Your second rak'ah is invalid. You are in the third, but counted as a second. Because that rak'ah, there is no ruku' and ruku' is rukun. Again, you are in Salatul Isha. In the second rak'ah, you miss ruku' You complete the rak'ah, go to tashahud number one and stand up for the third rak'ah. Then you remember that the ruku' in the previous rak'ah is missing. Now count this rak'ah, which is the third, as a second. Because any rak'ah, there is no rukun, this rak'ah is null and void. Continue your salah and then sujood sahu. Is this missing clear? Oh, mashallah, no question. Very good. Okay. Oh. Yes, but that's the last question I take from the, anyone who is not adult. That's all ahkam for adults. Okay, go on, Ammar. Yes, you just say my second rak'ah is null and void. I am now instead of third rak'ah, I am in second rak'ah. I will complete my second rak'ah and sit down for tashahud and then pray two rak'ah again. You understand? Yes. I will talk just after a while. I will talk. No. Okay. Answer your question now because I, I say in details. But till now, if you do it before or after, it's okay. There's no difference. Just what is highly recommended, we'll talk about that after a while. Yes. As you like. You can say Allahu Akbar. No problem. Yes. Can I uh, ask in Arabic? Yes. I try to understand Arabic. Go on. تمام تمام نعم كل شيء كل شيء كأنها كأن الثانية مش موجودة كأنك ما صليت الثانية وأنت الآن في الثاني بس طيب للسودان كلمة زول لغة عربية فصيحة الزول له سبعة معاني بالعربية منها الرجل الخفيف الظريف طيب Okay, so this is if you miss, if you miss one ruk'ah, one ruk'in, sujood or ruku'ah. Usually people, they don't miss fatiha. But if you miss ruku'ah or sujood, that's the hukum. Okay, imagine now you miss something but not ruk'in. Not something fundamental. Not ruku'ah or sujood or fatiha. The, f the famous situation here is, when you pray Isha or Asr or Dhuhr and you miss the first Tashahud. Very common. Even if you are alone or the Imam himself is very common. You are, you pray Salatul Isha and after the second Raka'ah you should sit down for the first Tashahud. But you forgot and you stand up. When you stand up completely, you remember, oh, I didn't do my first tashahud. This is very common. And the hukum here is, don't go to tashahud at all. Never go to tashahud. Just complete your salah. And in the end, make sujood as sahu Never go back to the first tashahud. It's not rukun. When you stand up, standing here is rukun. So don't go from rukun to a wajib, for example. Again, you pray Salatul Isha and you miss the first tashahud. So you stand up for the third rak'ah. When you stand up, you remember. You just ignore it and complete your salah and in the end, you'll make up that tashahud with sujood sahu 
This happened with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself. One day he prayed one of the four rak'ah and he forgot that tashahud and stand up. The Sahaba say, Subhanallah. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he didn't come back to tashahud. Complete his salah, and in the end he makes sujud al sahu. Is that clear? This okay. That's also, if you miss anything, sometimes that's, that's the common, that's the most common. Okay, now we talk about if you add something, if you miss something, the last thing, if you doubt in something. That's very common nowadays for some people. You don't know if it's third rak'ah, fourth rak'ah, did I do my sujood, two sajda, one sajda? You understand me? A lot of thinking nowadays. So this doubt also needs sujood sahu and needs something else. First example, you are in Salatul Isha. You are in the third rak'ah, but you are in doubt. Is it second or third? Is it second or third? What you should do in this situation, first of all, Take a few seconds to remember. If you can't remember more than 50%, then go for it. For example, you just a few seconds. No, I think it's the third. I'm pretty sure. That's it. Just continue salah. Even sujood so you don't need. However, you don't know, is it third or second? Make it second. To be sure, if you don't know it's third rak'ah or second rak'ah, count as a second rak'ah to make sure that you, and again, you have to make sujood sahu. That's the first example of the numbers of rak'at. Yes. Okay. There's some arkans, but what you will miss is ruku and sujood usually. Yes, there is, there is takbiratul ihram, there is qiratul fatiha in the majority of ulama. Then, then there is standing itself, there is ruku', there is standing after ruku', there is sujood, there is sitting after sujood, and there is the last tashahud. This is the arkan. But usually, you will not forget just ruku' or sujood. That's, that's, that's usually, yeah. هذا بعدين هذا إمامة حكام الإمامة نعم so you are in doubt of how many number of ركعات is it three or four make it three is it you are in the first ركعة or second ركعة make the first ركعة like this okay suppose you are in doubt of how many سجدة I did did I do my two سجدات or just one Again, if you doubt a rukun, just do it again. So I don't know if I did my two sajdas. Count as you don't do it. Go to the second sajda. Always do the little to be ensure that you do everything in your salah. And again, if you doubt and go to the little, you have to make sujood sahu you have to make sujood al-sahu da'iman, always. That's the three categories. Adding something, missing something, or doubting in something. Now we come to sujood al-sahu. Sujood al-sahu, is it before salam, after salam? Okay. There's a consensus between scholars that if you do it before or after, your salah is valid. Before or after. The only khilaf between scholars, which is the Prophet ﷺ did, is it before or after, which is the right things. But if you do it before or after, it's valid. So it's better in this case to ask the scholar you trust, or if you follow one madhab, just go for that. For example, madhab al-shafi'iyya. The all sujood al-sahu is before salam. 
always. Madhab al ahnaf opposite. The all sujood al sahu is after salam. Hanabila and Malikiya, they are in the middle. They make difference between if you add something, make it after salam. If you miss something, make it before salam. If you add and miss, make it before salam. Don't worry about these differences. Do whatever. If you follow one method, for example, just go for it. Or if you ask one scholar you, you trust, just follow what he said. But what I want you to know that it's before or after, it's all valid. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in his life, there's three situations he forgets something in Salah. And that's Qadr from Allah to teach this Ummah. The first situation, he prayed for Rak'az and he forgot the first Tashahud. The first Tashahud. So they say, subhanAllah, but he didn't come back because that's the hukum. He complete his salah and make sujood al-sahu before salam. It's the first one. Second situation of the Prophet Sallallahu he prays salatul asr. Ah, you, okay. I'll, I'll repeat it. You miss your, your question. What's your name? What's your name? Ahmed. Hayak Allah. Okay. So I said if you do before or after, it's okay. But it's better to, if you follow one madhab, do you follow one madhab? Ahmed. Hanafi. Okay. So Hanafi is always after salam. Hanafi, any sujood sahu, just when you sit down for the last tashahud, say the first tashahud, salam. Salam al Ibrahim as Tahiyatu lillahi wa salawat. Then say, Assalamu alaikum. Then go to sujood sahu. Then complete the tashahud and then salam again. That's madhab al ahnaf. Just continue. Absolutely. This is Sahaba. Absolutely. You'll see now in the, in the second situation. They follow him in something more than that. This is Sahaba because this is, this is Prophet Sallallahu He can reveal, he can receive a revelation. You understand? Unless he warned them for something. It's not like us. So the first situation of the Prophet Sallallahu he missed the second, the first tashahud. Second situation, he was in Salatul Asr. Pray two rak'ah, only two. Only two. And make salam. And change his place. Go to um, Amud. What's Amud in English? Come. Pillar. Go to the pillar. And sit on the pillar like this. And he put his hand like this. Abu Bakr Umar around him. And nobody can say anything. They shocked. What's going on? Maybe this is a new revelation. Salatul Asr became just two. That's Rasulullah. Only one man can talk in that situation. We don't know his name even. The Sahaba call it Dhul Yadain. Call him Dhul Yadain. His hands is very big, unusual. So they call him the one with two hands. It means two big hands. Dhul Yadain. That man came to the Prophet O oh, Prophet, do, did you forget or there is a new revelation? Prophet said, I didn't forget and there is new, no new revelation. He said, you forgot. Then Prophet asked Abu Bakr and Umar, is that right? They said, yes, you pray just two rak'ahs. Before I continue, the amazing thing the Rawi said when the Prophet ﷺ go to that pillar, There's some people always when Imam finished salah, they run away. Assalamu alaikum, alaikum, run away. Even the time of the Prophet. ﷺ. So Sahabi called them as Saran, those always fasters. 
they already left the mosque. <laughs> and the Prophet ﷺ said, أَحَقًّا مَا يَقُولُ ذُو الْيَدَيْنِ Is the Yadin right? He said, yes, you pray just two. Then he went to the mihrab again. He didn't start salah from the scratch. He continued. He prayed two rak'ah and make sujood sahur. Look at all this conversation. Oh, Prophet, did you for forget? Or oh, there's a new revelation. And he asked Abu Bakr and Umar. And they, all this because they thought they are still in salah. The main lesson here is sujood al sahu is to fix salah. Don't start salah from the beginning. Because if this is the rule, then it will lead you to a swas, to a lot of doubt. If any mistake in salah, okay, I will start from the beginning. Another mistake, oh, I will start from the beginning. Oh, I will start from the beginning. No. Just fix your salah by sujood al sahu. So this is the second example. He prays Salat al-Asr, just two rak'as. And go to that pillar and someone remind him so he continue and made sujood al -Sahu. This hadith is very famous. Called hadith dhil yadayn. Some of the scholars, ulama al-Shafi'iyya, al-Ala'i, I think, he wrote a very big book, more than 500 pages just about this hadith بفوائد حديث ذي اليدين فرائد that's long time 30 years ago I forget the name of the hadith but فرائد كذا في في شرح حديث ذي اليدين the third situation of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he pray one of the four zrak'a and instead of sit after the fourth rak'ah, he stand up. That's your question now. He stand up for the fifth rak'ah. Fifth. All the sahab follow him. Absolutely. Till he finish the fifth rak'ah. And he makes salam. They said, oh prophet, is there a new revelation? Look at adab. He said, why? They said, you pray five. Said, no. Then he immediately made sujood al-sahu. So that's the three situation of the Prophet That's qadr from Allah for him to teach us. If you have mistake, just fix it. Okay, that's my side. Now is your side, inshallah. Tafadal. Sheikh Ahmed. Okay, first of all, push something in salah is not good. Uh, that's not good. It's just very gentle, very kindly. <laughs> they don't need to push imam, because already imam, if they know there's someone, he will go to the further. You don't need to push imam. You should uh, respect your imam. But you just say, Allahu Akbar. If you say it loudly, they will know you join salah. So imam will go further. Or gently, you can say, just like this, no push, just like this. And then you say, Allahu Akbar. Do anything genuinely to show Imam that you join your salah. If, in case, Imam didn't know that, and you pray Imam here, and then one, two, that's valid also. That's valid salah. Not push, but ju just, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Both. He can say Allah Akbar or he can say just touch very kindly here. Both, yeah. It's okay. Yes. Uh. Okay. Sujood al sahu is it sunnah or wajib? No, it's wajib because sujood al sahu is just make up for something missing. It's just something missing. All. Oh well, yeah, it's just to make up something. But the most famous thing is suppose 
you miss sujood al-sahu even. Okay? And you don't remember till you go to the, your work. You are in workplace now, or at university or school. Oh, I should make sujood al-sahu in Salat al-Fajr. Don't worry, your salah is valid. But next time, focus, please. That's why sujood al-sahu is you can't make up a rukin. Always sujood sahu with wajibat, not with arkan. You understand me? That's why, even if you forget it and long time, except in Madhab al Malikiya, if you remember sujood sahu even after one year, you just do it immediately. Okay. But if you forget sujood sahu and you're still in the place of salah, do it. One minute, two minutes, yeah. Now. Alhamdulillah. The question is, are you allowed to break your salah if something necessary come up? For example, he said, if your mom call you, you are downstairs and she is upstairs, for example. Or if a delivery, you're waiting for delivery and they knock the door. Okay. You can break your salah if something necessary. Let me analyze these examples. If your mom call you, it depends. If there's someone at home, you don't have to reply. Because usually your mom just call anyone to do something. So your brothers or siblings, they will do the duty. But if you, just you and your mom at home, also depend. Sometimes if you call you, you can realize it's something necessary. If it's necessary, immediately. Break your salah and go to your mom. If you realize from the voice that it's not necessary. Sheikh, I'll, I'll say no. Al -an. Al -an. <laughs> so, but if you find from the voice it's necessary, yes, you can break your salah. The second example, delivery. Again, if there is someone at home don't break your salah. If you know that that delivery, if you don't open the door, it, you will, it will miss or put you a paper and you have to go in far away to bring this. It means there is problem for you. Yes, in that situation. But just for something necessary. What's your name? Shamal. Huh? Shamal, Shamal. Shamal ask if if you are in prayer and there is a lion or a dangerous <laughs> dog try to interrupt you in salah, definitely you have to break your salah and do something. Otherwise, you are in another world. Break your salah sometimes, breaking your salah sometimes wajib. Qat al salah hayanikun wajib. If something dangerous, I said it before last time, if you, your child, you heard a strong voice and your child is fall down in something necessary and yes, in that, you have to break your salah, you have to. If you want to save any life, Muslim, non-Muslim, saving life, another life is necessary, you have to break your salah, absolutely. Very good. If you come back, you save one life or you solve the problem and you come back, no, you have to start your salah from the beginning. No. Okay. Okay. To inform of what? To 
Okay, give me example now. If the imam miss... If I miss... Uh, if I pay three rakats, I'll show. Okay, if you are the imam. I, uh, as the imam. And okay. In fact, someone informs me and I make up the... Uh, Fourth rakat, okay. Raka, okay. I pay my, uh, Sujood, good. Do I have to tell the people who prayed with me and did only three rakat and didn't know? No, they will know already. But if the, the, the scenario is like when they left or... They ah, okay, okay, okay. Now I understand. Okay, the, he said, you said that in the situation of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he did Salatul Asr just two rak'ah and he went to that pillar, some people, they left the mosque. So they don't know. Yes, we should inform them and said, you miss this. Yes, we should inform them. Absolutely. Yes. You are the imam or? No, I'm not imam. Not, you are the ma'mum. Uh, ma'mum is the one who follow the imam. Just to make it, yeah. So I'm the ma'mum. And in my search for shahud, um, I accidentally start my salawat. So Allah, 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 Allah. Without at tahiyyat Okay. Um, but then I remember that I'm only in my first one. And then the imam stands up. Do I have to do? Okay. Good, good, good question. That's the question. There's a lot of questions regard to Imam. I will answer this, but if there is anyone also, we want to finish the sujood al saho first, or any movement, then we come back to Ahkamul Imam. But I will answer this. Look, if you are ma'mum, ma'mum means follow the Imam in congregation. Your Imam can do a lot for you. Can, for example, he said, I am with Imam. Pray Salatul Isha. And we are in the first tashahud. Instead of say, At-Tahiyyatu Lillah, I say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Till I finish the salawat, then Imam stand up for the third rak'ah. In this case, even if you follow Imam, you don't have to do anything. In congregation, Imam can carry a lot in behalf of you. That's why he is Imam. Yeah. If I'm playing out loud for Johan, I'm playing Farz for either Maghrib or Isha or Fajr, and I make a mistake in the, in the Surah of Fatiha, and someone who's not praying corrected me, do I listen to them and correct it? And if I did, do I need to do anything? No. Okay. If, if you are pray alone, out loud, Maghrib, Isha, Fajr, and you make mistake in recitation in the surah after Fatiha. Someone nearby, he correct your mistake. That's fine. Should I accept? It depends to you. It's up to you. <laughs> yes, if you accept the mistake, there's no problem. There's no problem at all. Yes. Next If you are ma'mum in a congregation, you follow the imam, and the imam go to ruku' before you finish, before you complete your fatiha, should you follow imam? Yes, the strongest opinion, you should follow imam, and he will carry that in behalf of you. Especially if you are in the beginning. If you are just one ayah or two, you can complete it and then follow him. But don't be late. The main lesson in Imam, you have to follow Imam. Don't be late or don't do something before Imam. Never. Yes. Ah. Okay. Very good. If you are with Imam and you are in the last tashahud, the last tashahud, you are ma'mum, you follow the Imam in congregation, the Imam read the tashahud very fast, like me, and then you don't finish your tahiyyat. 
In this case, yes, you can complete your tahiyyat. But not the dua after that, just the salawat, you can complete it. In this case, not like any case else, because salah now is, you can complete your tahiyyat and then, and then make salam. Shailillah. Naam. I will come to you. Shailillah. What do you say in sujood al sahu Sujood al sahu is two sajdas, two prostration, like, exactly like what you say in any sajda. Subhana rabbi ala, subhana rabbi ala. If you want to make dua, like any normal sajda. Yes? Okay, if you are in Salatul Isha and you are in the second rak'ah and you complete Fatiha and another surah, instead of go to Ruku' you fall down to Sujood. Is that right? Is that the scenario? Okay, okay. You are in Salatul Isha, you are in the second rak'ah, you pray Fatiha, Surah, Ruku' and only one sujood. You miss the second sujood. You sit down for the first tashahud and you stand up for the third rak'ah. In the third rak'ah, you remember that you miss one sajda in the second rak'ah. In this case, who can answer? Ah, count this third rak'ah as a second. Your second rak'ah is null and void. You understand me? Because you missed one rukun. That's it. You are now count, oh, I am in the second rak'ah. So pray the second rak'ah, sit down again for the first tashahud, and pray to rak'ah, and sit down, and do sujood sahu after you finish your salah. Okay. Naam. لا هو بس نحن نحن نقول إذا واحد نسى أو زاد أو يصير بس ما يسوي قلق يصير سجود السهو هذا سجود السهو الشيطان يكرهه يكره سجود السهو لما تزيد سجود السهو الشيطان يعني يجيت أنجري when you make سجود السهو لأنك تصلح الصلاة فإذا سويت سجود السهو خلاص ارتاح الشيطان ليس له عليك نصيب نعم يس You come back from home, you come back from school or work, and you need toilet. But the time of salah is very limited. If you go to toilet, the time will, will finish. Then what's the time here? What's the rule here? The rule is to go to toilet, no doubt. Because salah needs khushu'ah. You can't make khushu' while you need emergency, you need toilet. So there is two types. If you need toilet, just not emergency, yes, you can pray. But if you need toilet, really, yes, you have to go to toilet. Why? Because Sharia want you to pray in focus, in khushu'. That's why anything can cut this khushu', you have to make it first. For example, you are not in the end of the time, but you are in the middle of the time, and you are very hungry, and the food is just on the table. You should eat first and then pray. Why? Just to make khushu in salah. Because maybe some people, if they go and pray, they will see the pizza in every single rak'ah. <laughs> this is a problem. Okay, yes. Alayhi salatu was salam. We. No, he just complete. 
when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed to rak'ah salatul asr and then they remind him he didn't start salah from scratch no no at all he just prayed to rak'ah and then makes sujood so absolutely no doubt huh. okay That's another issue. No. He said, if I pray to rak'ah, salatul asr, and then my wudu break, that's another issue. If your wudu break, it means your salah is break. In the strongest opinion. In the majority of scholars, yeah. Yes, you have to start from the beginning. Yes. If you pray at home with your sisters or mother and you make mistake in recitation, are they allowed to correct you? Absolutely. Yes. They can correct you. That's your mahar maharim. Yes. Don't make mistake. But if you make, don't take it personally. Yes. But this is, this is woman of your maharim. You understand me? This is your mahram. If the woman is in congregation, she should make this. Not subhanallah. But if in your maharim, she can do both. Either do this, subhanallah, or correct. If she correct you, her salah is valid. Yeah. Tafadal. <laughs> ah. Okay, so he talk about another mas'ala, we'll talk about it inshallah in details in the next lessons inshallah, if Allah give us life. Jam'u salawat Nowadays in Britain, time is very short in the day, during the day. So many people, they work, it's difficult for them to pray Dhuhr on time and Asr also on time, especially Asr. Can they join Dhuhr and Asr? If you are at work and you can't take a break during the work, yes, in, the, in this case, you can join Dhuhr and Asr. However, try to take a break and pray every single Salah on time. If it's difficult, yes, you can join Dhuhr and Asr. And when you join them, from the beginning of Dhuhr, make niya that you will pray both. Dhuhr and Asr. So before you pray Dhuhr, in your mind I will pray Dhuhr and then Asr after that. As a jama'a taqdeem. Yes. Okay. Okay, we'll come to that inshallah. Salatul Musafir. We'll come to that. Are you in the same situation now? Okay. Tafadal. And? Your wife's praying at home. Okay. While she's praying, the child runs towards her. Okay. And the child wants to be held. Is she able to continue her prayer while she's holding the child? Yes, the strongest opinion. The question is if your wife is praying at home and her child run and run towards her, and that child wants his mom to carry him in salah. Can she carry her child and continue the salah? The strongest opinion, yes. Like the Prophet ﷺ did in Bukhari, she can carry. If she can, if he can understand, a bit seven years old, though, she can just kindly tell. But if he is very little or small, yes. Try to avoid it. If not, yes. But better to avoid it, yeah. But if you are there, just carry him or her. That's your job. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'll come to you. Yes.
You raise your voice. <laughs> Very nice question. If you are in congregation and you are ma'mum, you are behind the imam, and imam go to sujood and he did long sujood, can you say subhanallah? <laughs> Very nice question. If it's too long, yes. If it's unusual, you can say subhanallah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Ammar. No, it's Isha time now. Okay, go on. Yeah, but it's, if it's dangerous, you have to. Where's your little brother? Show me your little brother. Okay, don't do something dangerous. Okay, if he is in salah and in the end of the time and his brother do something dangerous, he should stop him. I said before, you have to break your salah. Anything dangerous, electricity, you afraid about the life, you have to break your salah. No? Um, in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after the two like us, when he continued the prayer, did he say Allahu Akbar and continue? Yes. Allahu Akbar and do two rak'an. Okay, yes. Maybe like when you're, when, um, when you're praying, um, Good question, Luqman. So you are at work. Okay, can you pray at work, Luqman? No, because you don't have wudu and there's no toilet. Okay. MashaAllah, very good scenario. So you are at work, Salatul Maghrib. You don't have wudu, there is no toilet. The time between Maghrib and Isha is very short. What can you do in this situation? Just make niyyah that you will combine Maghrib and Isha when you return at, to home. If you can't pray Maghrib for these situations, these reasons, and time is very limited, make niyyah in the time of Maghrib when I back home, I will join Maghrib and Isha both. Yes, mashallah alaik. Ah. Yes. That's Allah alam. But you have any emergency, you have to go for it. <coughs> but did you get sin? Allah alam. <laughs> yes. Okay, this is a very famous, there's two opinions. What I support is just pray in the seat. Time is first in this situation. If you are in airplane in Salatul Maghrib, there's two opinions for modern scholars. I support the opinion that time is first. If you have wudu, just pray even on your seat. Time is the priority here. Even if you can't stand up, you can pray when you are sitting. Can, can you do it in the airplane? If you can do it, you have to do it. If you can't, then go to Tayammum. Yeah. 
Okay, I think this is one hour complete. Wallahu alam wa sallallahu ala abdi wa rasulih Sayyidina Muhammad.